Last week, I, I publicly explained in very polite terms and a very polite policy analysis in the National Review why I personally could not support Trump. He was not my, not my preferred candidate in the primary. And the response from what I can only believe to be maybe Trump's most hardcore supporters, it was, it was kind of eye-opening. I have been called every name in the book, every sexually derogatory name, everything, as a result of just my opinion. Now, a few things to clarify. I don't work at National Review, what Reagan once referred to as his favorite magazine. I blast the left every day on my programs, and anyone who has any familiarity with my program's content knew that I was moving towards this position the more I read and the more I interviewed Trump and have talked about it. I have been critical of every candidate in this race, maybe though with John Kasich taking the brunt of it, at least in the primary. And I've also been fair with every candidate in this race. Like I said, Trump has been a guest on my programs repeatedly. I also want to correct another misconception here. I don't particularly enjoy disagreeing with people that I know and who in the past have been nice to me. What I enjoy less, however, is being dishonest with myself or being dishonest with all of you with what I believe. The only people who are actually shocked to hear that Trump was not my preferred candidate in the primary are people who have never listened to me. And if there's anyone out there who has listened and is genuinely shocked, I'm going to chalk that up to my professionalism at being fair and straightforward, which I think logically you would too. There have been people who have pointed out that uh, I was a liberal in the past. And as a reminder, the only way anybody knows this is because I've been extremely upfront about it. I published it first. You can quite literally chart my political and spiritual growth online. Yes, I was a teenage liberal up until the time I was 21 years old and 9-11 happened. It was a gradual and life-changing realization over which I have lost family and I have lost friendships. I've had my life threatened. I've had my kids' lives threatened. People have, they've come to my house. They've tried to sully my name. And I say this not to play some sort of victim, but to emphasize that people who maintain a vestige of liberalism do not risk their own or their family's well-being for conservatism or anything unless it is a principle in which they so truly and passionately believe. Additionally, I'm not running for the highest office in the land. Mr. Trump is. And I haven't been a liberal for over 15 years now, and I most certainly didn't tell Field and Stream last Friday that I support federal control over state land, which Mr. Trump did. Also, with respect to my boss, my opinion is my own. Glenn Beck is but one of my bosses. You know, I have several. My radio program is not affiliated with him or The Blaze. And I know this is kind of amazing, but Glenn and I, believe it or not, we're actually two different people with different thoughts, different opinions, and different approaches. He's nice, eh, not so much. He isn't a fan of video games. I love them. We think differently on a number of issues. And so for anyone to think that Beck is the result of me not choosing Trump as my preferred candidate, well, they must not have had much respect for me to begin with.